It's time again for another installation of one of the most vibrant fixtures on the American soccer calendar. We are in Madison for the home opener in the first match of the Henny Derby in 2024. Today's match presented by Dairyland Insurance. Both teams had their respective runs in the U.S. Open Cup. Unfortunately, it was ended their run for forward Madison at the hands of the Chicago Fire 2, who defeated them 2 to nothing. That was after a very successful first round 2 nothing win over Duluth FC. We'll see, though, whether this allows Madison to change their focus to the league, that in-league cup, and perhaps this might be a blessing in disguise for them. Richmond kickers are going to go on to the third round, a drubbing of the Maryland Bobcats, a team that's really, really good. You cannot overlook this Maryland Bobcats team. Five to two, though, frankly, a drubbing for them. They're going to go on to the third round and face Loudoun United, an in-state rivalry, the first time they have ever played them. Best of luck to the Richmond kickers as they continue their U.S. Open Cup journey. We'll see just how much that goes for them as we bring you our players to watch. First for the home team, Madison Domingos. They've got a very impressive guy who's been with the team for quite a long time, Derek Gebhard. He had the game-winning goal and an assist against Central Valley on the 29th. He's had a great start to the season, had a very good year last year as well. One of the most tenured players for this forward Madison team. Can they rely on his experience? Player to watch for the Richmond Kickers. A guy who's had another really good start to the season as well, and Chandler O'Dwyer. Both of these teams have played Central Valley in their most recent league game. He got the game-winning goal in that one as well as a goal in the U.S. Open Cup. Two goals in this game against the Fuego. He has been firing on all cylinders. Well, of course, this is more than just three points, isn't it? The Henny Derby, when these two teams meet, fireworks are sure to follow Madison ran this fixture last year, outscored Richmond 5-1 to one to keep the trophy. They won it last season. They won it the year before, and so that means Richmond is out for blood this year. They want to take the trophy back with them. They want to have that fan experience to be able to really lift that trophy and celebrate what is such a fun fun experience. Well, folks, this one's all about the fans. One of the most pure experiences in American soccer, the Henny Derby, when we come back right here, USL League One. Come see how Dairyland fits your life with affordable car insurance that fits your budget and 24-7 customer service that fits your schedule. Even if you have coverage lapses or a bumpy driving history, we've got you covered. For 70 years, we've been helping people just like you get the car insurance they need. So why wait? Contact Dairyland today. Getting the exact vehicle you want is easy at Zimbrick Volkswagen of Middleton. Come in and sit down with one of our sales professionals and build the Volkswagen you want. Pick all the features, order it, and then sit back and relax knowing you're getting your dream vehicle. The best things in life are worth waiting for after all. Check out our selection online or in person with new vehicles arriving every day. Your perfect Volkswagen could already be waiting for you at Zimbrick Volkswagen of Middleton. One of the best places to play the game. One of the best fixtures to have it in. Bree Stevens Field, Madison, Wisconsin for today's fixture. Forward Madison 
in Richmond Kickers, presented by Dairyland Insurance. Here's a look at our starting lineups. First for the home team, forward Madison. Of course, they have got a lot of new players in this lineup this year, but that central three, Osmond, Mel, and Shipman remains. They had 12 clean sheets last year, but there's a lot of new guys in front of them. Galindres, Villalobos. We're still seeing just how much alongside Boyce and Murphy. Can they really get that offense going, push things forward, and start to get some goals in on a regular? They had three last time out. Maybe they can repeat. That's how the starting 11 brought to you by the Madison Concourse Hotel lines up for the home team and the visitors, the Richmond Kickers. O'Dwyer, we already talked about him. He's going to be joined by Boshua today, a new member coming in from Tormenta the last season. Bill Hard, another new factor, but some guys we are very familiar with, Moran and Vignoles. They have been key to this attack so long for Richmond, but it's an all-new back line on that left-hand side. Shinfield, Garnett, and Hara. How can they factor in with the new guys pairing with Barnathan and Fitch? That chemistry is going to be very important. The Madison Concourse Hotel brings you those starting 11s. Head coach Darren Sawatsky hoping to pick up a win here in Madison. Well, this is a fixture that just brings so many dynamics to it. As both sides get ready to go out there. The all-white kits for Richmond. This is such a unique stadium just down the road from the Capitol building. We're in the shadows of it. The historic Brees Stevens Field opened in 1926, just steeped in history. This is a fixture, I believe, it will be steeped in history as well. Still in its early, early stages. But there is a lot to come from it. Of course, the home opener for forward Madison. We are waiting now because of a delay due to a hole in the net. Now, there's going to be some of you at home thinking, well, of course there's holes in the net. Well, this is not one of the ones that's supposed to be there. The net is not quite in fully operating order, so the referees are over there double-checking. I have to break out the zip ties. They're going to get that situation settled so that we can play safely and by the standards of the law. And that is what is holding us up at this moment. Home opener for forward Madison. They have never lost in their first game at home. This is their, of course, sixth time playing here at Bree Stevens to open the stadium. They are two wins, three draws, and no losses. Interestingly enough, they've played Greenville three times over that span, but never Richmond. So this has been a pretty good ticket to buy. If you're a forward Madison fan, you have a pretty good chance of seeing your team win. We got to talk with Coach Glasner about this fixture, about getting back home, talking about the importance of it. He said it's no secret how tough our schedule is. As you can see just how packed things are. He said it's going to be a relief to get back home in front of our fans. And they know that there's not a, you know, it's one thing he made very clear. There's not pressure at this point. It's a long season. But still, he said, of course, they want to pick up points at home. It's so crucial for them to be able to dominate on this field. I think they've had a pretty good record over the years. If you're joining us late and you're wondering why we haven't kicked off yet, there is a hole in the net in one of the goals. The referees are mediating that problem while we speak. There's a good look at it there. Got the handyman out to patch that up. For anyone who played maybe club or high school, you know exactly what that was back in my day, ages ago. We used to have to put sandbags on the back of the net in order to keep them down. So you can see right there, just trying to repair that bottom right-hand corner of the net. Referees always go over pregame and check. If you have a cheeky fan group, they'll chant check the nets because it's a pregame must-do for the referees and we will not be able to continue until they give the thumbs up. There is a checklist of items that the referees have to go through and make sure they're checking the lines or checking the nets, checking spaces around the field to make sure fans are within a certain distance that there's nothing else on the field. What I tell you folks, we got the zip ties out. Coming in clutch, beer in one hand, zip ties in the other. 
That should have been our player to watch right there. As he will lace and weave this net together in an attempt to try and get us underway here in Madison. It may seem trivial, but it is a very clear process that the referees have to go through and checklist everything off to make sure the safety of the spectators and the players are assured. Gonna give it a little tug. The referee seems to be pleased. And that brings us great enjoyment as well because that means we are just about ready to kick this game off. Referees having placated themselves, our head referee Alex Beeler. Well, folks, a fixture that never disappoints. It's worth so much more than just three points. Can the kickers claim their first win in Wisconsin since 2022? Or will the Mingos dodge defeat on opening day in front of their home fans? It is time for us to find out. Final check. Thumbs up from the referee, and we are underway in the Henny Derby in 2024. Forward Madison have never lost in their home opener. And they are the current holders of the Henny Derby trophy consecutively. Last season, they held on to it. But it has been a long time since Richmond have been able to win just in general against Madison. It was 2022, all the way back in October of that year, a one to nothing victory at Bree Stevens Field. And he's their only win over the Mingos in the last two seasons. Burn Shipman, such a reliable force along the back line. It's a mixture between new and old. It's the high press engages. Over the head of Vignals. Verity Sousa chases. And it's booted along by Dakota Barnathan. Of late, this has not been the most stable place for Madison as far as getting results goes. They're looking for their first home league win since September of last season. Funnily enough, that was actually against this Richmond team, two to nothing. That was the clincher in the Henny Derby. That is their only home win since August of last season. Vignals, whether Bill Hart. So bring Simon Fitch into play. Barnathan over to the very young Griffin Garnet. Just 17 years of age. Not the youngest player to ever play for Richmond, but certainly one of them. Garnet will chase down. He's had a pretty decent start to his professional career. This makes now his sixth start. He's already played a full 90 minutes three times so far. Central Valley, Spokane, and Christos. We'll show it to you at halftime when we look back at last week's highlights. He did have a Mistake that led to a goal. As Faraday Sousa gets stuck in with Fitch, gets around him, sticks the ball in, and Boshua. He's claiming the deflection, and the linesman agrees.
first real chance of the game for either team. Simon Fitch with some great individual play down the wing. In our first UW Health Sports Medicine corner kick. Referee holds. He's going to go in and have a word with the players on the goal line. As the whoops are up here at Bree Stevens. Here's the service. Middle of the box. Hooked clear. That was Devin Boyce. They are able to evade pressure. Arthur Boschua with the opening shot of the game. Joined from Tormenta, who he played with for the last two seasons. Three goals and two assists for the South African. Under pressure. Holding off James Vaughn. John Murphy. Beautiful touch to bring it down. It's Stephen Payne. Lobs one in. That'll be an easy grab for Pablo Hara. Speaking of Tormenta, that's another player coming up from South Georgia. Just up 95. Really went and raided the pantry. Down at Tormenta as there's a collision here. Bill Hart. Not sure if it was head to elbow or head to head. Chalaka is making it seem like it went head to head. And Adrian Bill Hart was immediately down. Looked like to me the contact was on the back of Bill Hart's head. Then up at the corner of Chalakas. Here is a look at it. So the ball comes up. Yeah, and it looks like it's maybe just the head. It, it, clearly, Bill Hart does get the worst of it. It looked like to me that it might have been the shoulder or the elbow. But Chalaka, I believe, just glances him. And Bill Hart is the worst for wear between the two. Of those are two new faces for their respective sides. Adrian Billhart, the German. Spent last season with Detroit City. Two of them get a real sporting pat on the shoulder to one another. Chalaka joining from San Diego Loyal. We're back on your way here at Bree Stevens. For those of you who do not have the full context on the Hinney Derby, it is just what it sounds like. Started back before the 2019 season. It was two African-American fans, one for each respective team. It was Richmond, it was Elliott Barr and Kyle Carr for Madison. They both found one another online, and there's a great article on protagonist soccer talking about black culture in soccer and the supporters group section them specifically talking about the representation of black supporters and going to these games and just not seeing enough African Americans in the stands and talking about finding one another online and sharing their love for soccer and when their two teams would meet they said okay look whoever wins the other one's got a the loser has to buy the winner a bottle of Hennessy. And so things began with that, and it really just blew up from there. And it has now turned into a trophy. They have taken a bottle of Hennessy and just put it on a wooden platform, decorated it, and now they exchange that between the two teams. It's a very organic and beautiful fan-driven competition that both coaches spoke highly of. And I think 
it's well regarded in the American soccer community. A real privilege to get to cover it. All in all, both teams have held the trophy for two seasons. Is that Bill Hart down again? I believe it is. No, it's Vignals. That's a really worrying sign for Richmond. Their star creative player. His left hip causing him some issues. He's on the all-league first team last season. Had 66 chances created, which was enough to earn him second most in the league. Had a goal and the game-winning assist in that round two matchup of the U.S. Open Cup against the Bobcats. It's a little bit of treatment. It looks like he'll be able to continue. Here is Vignoles right back into the fray. Both teams, though, have won the competition twice. All in all, Madison have won eight. Richmond five and just a lone draw. What's so interesting is how low scoring these affairs often are. 11 of the 14 matches in this series have had a clean sheet. That is over 78% in eight of those games. More than 50% ended 1-0. So this is often a close game, a tight game, and a low-scoring game. Here's Sousa. Once again, great work by Fitch. You said the better of him tonight. Tries to turn the corner. Shoulder to shoulder. Jimmy Villalobos goes over the top. Settles down here nicely. Galindrez out to Sousa. The fancy footwork. Sousa lobs one in. And he pulls the emergency switch. Maxi Shinfield out for the opening corner kick of the game for Madison. Beautiful scenes behind the goal. In full voice, how they would love a goal here to open up their celebrations on their home opener. This corner kick brought to you by UW Health Sports Medicine. Pinged in. Headed up and over. Well, sometimes you see lofted balls. Sometimes you see curled balls when it comes to these corner kicks. That one was driven. Right at the head of Timmy Mel. He rose up but could just not put it away. Select, the official match ball supplier of the USL Championship and USL League One, as well as many elite leagues throughout Europe. Visit us.special.slashsport.com for the latest select product specials and more. Select the player's choice. Here's Adrian Billhard. Was he brought down? Yes, says the referee. Verity Sousa, the guilty party. Dakota Barathin, the Massapequa, New York native.
Takes it short into Bill Hard. It's a deep ball. Kept in play. Get out for just a throw. Stephen Payne who blocked the service. Long throw. Settled by Vaughn. Payne can clip it away. And he's fouled in the process. They have just about weathered a very dangerous period in Richmond. They have three goals allowed in the opening 15 minutes of games this season. 43% of all the goals they've allowed have been in the opening 15 minutes. That's the most of any team. That actually goes really well with how Madison liked to play in last season. They had the second most goals scored over that same period. Nine goals in the opening 15 minutes of games. As well as the fewest conceded. A plus six goal differential in the opening 15 minutes. So a real big mismatch there. We have now crossed over into the 16th minute. And we'll see as both teams start pretty evenly here in this Henny Derby. The layoff, the shot taken in, and it's just wide. A beautiful spin. Hands to his head for Adrian Bilhard. Nice interplay on the edge of the box. He gets it out from under his feet and just puts it wide. They're claiming a deflection, and there was one, says our referee. So a crucial challenge to send this one out for just a corner. They'll go again, their second. To the back stick, Shipman gets a glove to it. Stephen Payne and Vignoles. Clipped in. Acrobatic clearance. Great work. Gebhardt, though, steps on the ball. Payne far side. Now Souza. You can see this back three really starting to take shape. Stephen Payne on one side, Souza on the other. Beautiful ball. Gebhardt will he take it himself? Gets it on to his right. But a crucial challenge by Dakota Barnathan. And that is one of those opportunities that just looks so easy to take. But had Barnathan not been there to apply that pressure, Gibhart may have been able to just stroke it in with his right boot. Vaughn, will the offside flag come up? Not for the moment, belatedly it will. It's Chandler O'Dwyer, the intended target. Passes the eye check. Well, both teams coming off of wins against Central Valley. Three to nothing on the road for Madison. Dominant performance. Saw them end up with five players in the League One Team of the Week. Boyce, Gebhard, Shipman, Osman, and Murphy. For the Richmond kickers themselves, three goals in a win over the Fuego. But not by as convincing of a margin. 3-2 the final score there. They were up 1-0. They went down 2-1 and then came back to win the game. 73rd minute O'Dwyer goal. That is their first come from behind win since August of 2023. 
funnily enough, that was also against the Fuego. That was the only time in 2023 that Richmond came from behind to win a game. Big boot by Shipman. A foot race, Galindrez. It's one with ease, though. Zaka Moran. Devin Boyce. Cheekily standing inside that 10 yard radius. You take it anyways. Chalaka. Sue's up. Great work in tight space, and he will draw the foul. Referee thought about playing advantage. Michael Chalaka joined the San Diego Loyal in July. Team only lost three times when he was in the squad. Played over 300 minutes. Nice layoff for Gebhardt. Skipping through, tries a ball to the outside, and he was pulled back, says the referee. Devin Boy stands over it. Already has two goals since joining this Ford Madison team from Greenville. Of course, a legend at Omaha. Unlikely to shoot. Let's see what he can do. Lobs one in, and it's ran all the way by Pablo Hara. Of course, it was a difficult farewell to the usual number one in green for Richmond. Kira Fitzgerald rejoining one of his old sides, previously the Carolina Railhawks, now in CFC as they made their way up and out of League One and into the championship. Fitzgerald, who played for the old Railhawks back in the old NASL days. Of course, spent so much time with Richmond. He's on his way out, and Coach Sawatsky saying it was a pretty big no-brainer to pick up Pablo Hara. In fact, when we were talking, it was just after practice, and he said, everyone's left. I'm in my car in the parking lot after practice, and Pablo Hara is in the locker room right now, sweeping up. Completely. They did not ask him to do. He said he's just a really good character guy, a really good culture guy. Exactly the sort of fit that you would want to replace someone as influential as Akira Fitzgerald. A long throw now for Richmond. Boshua tries to flick it on away by Payne and will do it all over again. Just past the halfway point of half number one. A decent chance for either side. Again, they target Boshua. Again, it's cleared. Ball sent in. They're going to go into the roof of the net. Those shipmen had to watch it the whole way. Apparently, there was deflection along the way as well. This will be corner kick number three. All three taken from this near side. None as of yet to truly test Shipman in goal. Back stick this time. 
Cleared down line. Boyce. Gebhardt. Stephen Payne. Cut out by Barnathan. Bill Hart. Vaughn. Vignoles. Ball dipped in. So we buy Finch at first. Here they go again, direct. See Galinja has just dropped off the shoulder. They've gotten the clean sheet so far. Madison and they have been so good at it. Three clean sheets in a row. Something they managed twice last season. Getting clean sheets was something that they were experts at last season. 12 of them, the second most in the league. To be able to string three together so early on in the season when they are still adjusting. A lot of the same members to this back line. They still peppered in some new ones. Chalaka and Souza as Galindrez goes to work on the far side. Took a deflection on its way through. It's been a bit of a lull here recently for Madison in the attacking half. Tees up a long cross. It's turned over though. Villalobos. Of course, two very different systems matching up here. Tactically, it's a lot of fun to watch. Was Sousa able to keep that in? Yes. He's had his number all night long. Simon Finch. That is a battle to keep your eye on. Faraday Sousa and Simon Finch on this near side. which has been winning that battle early and often. Foul is in. They thought about taking it quickly. Chalaka. Souza. Simon Fitch again having none of it. Well, this has been a particularly fruitful time of the game for Richmond. These middle 15 minutes, all but one of their goals they have scored in the middle 15 of either half. Two in the first half, two in the second half. Seems as though once they get settled into a game, the doldrums of the half appear to be the most successful offensively for them. So far, neither side has really looked more likely than the other to find a goal. Gebhardt might change that, though. On to his right. Gebhardt, tight angle! It makes no difference! Derek Gebhardt, the hero time and time again for Madison. He provides the goal in the Henny Derby. Well, it looked like the chance might have gone away from him. It looked like he might have just dribbled himself into a cul-de-sac, but no, he spots the slimmest, the most slender of angles and puts the ball just down it. Rolls it into that bottom corner past Hara. 
and an important and important goal in this Henny Derby. He loves to score against this Richmond team. Had two goals in a 2 0 win against them last season and a game winning assist in their 2 1 victory. So this should be now the third consecutive game in which he has contributed on the score sheet. And that is honestly after a pretty lackluster start attackingly for Madison. Richmond had a couple of chances were looking dangerous in the air. Richmond had the one chance rather Madison had the one chance from Gebhardt that was blocked. Can they respond immediately? Taken off the head of Moran. Well very rarely am I able to pick a player to watch so successfully. Most often than not it's more of a weight on their shoulders rather than a spotlight. But this time it rings true. They're not done yet. Villalobos big switch to Souza. Space on his right. Villalobos again surely not strikes it cleanly but straight at Hara. Half an hour gone here at Bree Stevens. The goal from Derek Gebhard. Who else? His 14th goal for the Mingos. Bill Hart. Here's the 17 year old Garnett. this at the top of the broadcast Madison have never lost in a home opener two wins three draws and no losses they had six home wins last season twice as many as Richmond but half as many as the leaders Northern Colorado who had 12 set the pace at the top of the league the referee will call Moran for the foul Richmond last season had a pretty torrid time on the road. They were tied third for the least amount of road wins, just three. Only Chattanooga and Lexington had less. Madison really grown into this game. It was an early momentum start for Richmond. And you could just tell Madison started to seem to care more about possession of the ball. Started to use it a little bit more aggressively. And from that moment on, they have not looked back. Pinged out with this near side for Fitch. Bill Hart. In the end, a decent ball, but all the attackers were tied up. Probably a little too heavy. But still, Boshua was in a tangle with Mitch Osman. Shepherds it back to Pablo Hara.
Long ball, trying to connect with Vaughn. Good work by Chalaka. Here's James Vaughn, his fourth start. Played the full 90 against Torminta. Englishman who is not unfamiliar with the American game. Spent time with Detroit City when they were back in Nisa. And he went back home to his native England to play in the National League South for multiple teams. Welling United, Eastburn among the few. From Bexhill on Sea. Joshua in between the lines. Just about connected with Bill Hart. In the end, they go with the safe option and send it out for just a throw. It was one of those passes that looked like it wasn't going to amount to much, but nobody hopped on it. Let's see what Simon Fitch has got in his locker. Short to Vignoles. Trap it down well. And concedes the throw. So look at Faraday Souza. He's born in Zaire now, the Democratic Republic of the Congo. It's been last season with Sac Republic in the championship. A very successful stint with Omaha, where he won League One back in 2021. Under 10 minutes to go, plus stoppage time in Bree Stevens. Derek Gebhardt's tight angle goal separates us in the Henny Derby. One of two this year. In a truncated league schedule, they added the in-season cup. So the season's a little bit shorter. Last season, you played every team pretty much three times. This year, it's just two. So that's one less for us to enjoy. But it could mean that these two teams meet in the cup, which would mean that there would be multiple trophies on the line. We didn't have a chance to find out if that would count towards those standings and whether or not fans watching from Richmond will be yelling at the TV right now. It's one of those things you can't guarantee will happen, so it's unlikely that it would. But the more Henny Darby we can consume, the better. Chalaka. Great work by Bill Hard. Just won the ball cleanly, getting in between the man and the ball. Souza trying to stop the quick take of the free kick. You gotta be really careful not to give that away there. So two over at Vignoles. Schinfeld. A left-footed option, a right-footed option. The wall not quite 10 yards. This will be Vignal surely. No, he leaves it for Schinfeld. Decent ball in, it's headed towards goal. But an easy pickup for Shipman. Well, time to take a look at our keys to the game, brought to you by Burrish Group at UBS. And, of course, there's a lot of factors that go into a game with as much weight as this one. A lot of things to, to look at and to digest, but one of the things that Madison will think is key today is getting points here at home and relying on that home field because they're going to spend a lot of time on the road in their coming game. So they need to pick up points. Just two of their 
first nine games are at home, so they want to pick up maximum points. And Richmond watched the transition game. This is something that Coach Sawatsky said to us to not let themselves get caught in quick transitions. They are a team that likes the ball. They like to possess. They like to control the game. And if they allow themselves to be broken down quickly, it can lead to goals. And while that wasn't really the way the first goal came from Madison, it certainly wasn't advantageous. So those are your keys to the game brought to you by Burrish Group at UBS. Straight up by Villalobos. Settled by Gebhardt. To the near side for Souza. Galindrez on the near side. Souza cycles it around. Boyce with the dummy. Clipped in. Bill Hart. The way to build out of pressure there is Fitch will try to release Bill Hart. And that'll be easily back into the arms of Shipman. Can't watch the match? Turn on Sirius XM FC 157. North America's only 24-7 source for engaging soccer talk including USL All Access Thursdays or Tuesdays, excuse me, at 7 p.m. Eastern. Plus hear live matches from the USL, MLS, Premier League, and more, all on Sirius XM FC 157 in the new Sirius XM app. Here comes Galindrez. Serves his ball in, wins the corner. Just five minutes to go, plus stoppage time in half number one. Gebhardt's goal separates us so far. Just the second corner of the game for Madison, Devin Boyce with his right foot. Lots of space for Villalobos who strikes it wide and then the redirection can't be turned in. Well, that's gotta be a little bit disappointing as this replay is brought to you by Dairyland to leave Villalobos in so much space and then as well on the back stick, just nobody marking up there. And that could have very easily gone the other way. Via Lobos left with plenty of space and credit to him for being able to bring it down. And even though he did not strike it on target, it could have very well still ended up with the back of the net being rippled. The first half really was where Madison made their name known last season. 59% of their goals they scored in the first half. Simon Fitch will intercept that. They had the fewest goals scored in the league in the second half. And nearly two-thirds scored in the first. And that trend has continued a little bit into this season. Their last match against the Fuego they won three to nothing but all three goals were scored in the first half of course if you're the head coach you don't care too much as long as they go in coach Glazer who said that they had to improve in the boxes during the off season defensively and offensively. It appears as though they've done that job so far. Just about halfway through this one, they're looking at three and a half consecutive games or seven halves with a clean sheet. Having scored precipitously through all of them.
Garnett. Bill Hart. Advantage played. Just not on the same wavelength as Boshua. Of course, forward Madison fans will be wondering, well, where is Emiliano Terzaghi? Injured himself last season. Still not available for selection. 32-year-old Argentinian who will be a real threat when he returns. The Richmond kickers are hoping that sooner rather than later. Rumors of four minutes of stoppage time to come. A decent haul. Madison, obviously the clear of the two sides, feeling better about themselves to start this game. But Richmond certainly not out at all. They still lead in expected goals. They are now thoroughly being outshot. Six to three, three to one on target. We will go into those four minutes of added time now. I'm not sure what the delay was there. Take us a minute to get restarted. As the Sun makes one final appearance here. Drifting away behind the stands at Bree Stevens Field. Formerly a baseball stadium that has been repurposed into one of the most colorful stadiums, not just because of all the shades of pink and blue. One of the most fun grounds in American soccer and one of America's most fun cities. Here is Bill Hart, turns the corner. Fitch now, beautiful tackle along the goal line. Still not cleared. Bill Hart scoops it back in and Shipman collects. But there was claims of a handball. Really good interplay. We'll take a look at it here. Bill Hart does wonderfully, turns the corner, and it's Souza who slides in, and it's that trailing left arm that they're claiming it hit, and I think they might have a case, because I think the ball would have gone through had it not been for Souza's arm. Now it's that continual argument that we have with handball as it continues to develop. Is it a natural position? He's going to ground. Yes, that's where your arms are going to be. They're going to stop you from hitting the ground. But would the ball have otherwise been able to get to its target had his arm not been there? Of course, we do not have video review, but I do think that would be worth another look if we did. And I might just slightly err on the side that that should have been looked at. Player is down in the center circle. They're going to wave the physios on. James Vaughn might have been the one who collided. This was well off the ball as well. Wondering if there might have just been some antics. Pulling his lower back. Positive thumbs up from the physio. The worry does not have long to make it to the locker room. It's Murphy who's down. We do have a look at it. So yes, it is Vaughn, and it looks like a knee into his back there. jump up and maybe a little knee into the lower back of John Murphy Jr. He's also been really good since joining. Came in from Tormenta. Had a goal in that game against the Fuego. That was his first goal in the pink and blue and also his first full 90. 
guy who has really had a lot of time in multiple different leagues. He's only 23 years old, but has played for Tormenta, the New York Red Bulls, too. Omaha and then also spent a season with Clemson so man with wise shoulders on his wise wise head on his shoulders for such a young age so Murphy will be able to continue thankfully this is going to take as much past the prescribed four minutes. We had some stoppage at the end of regulation. This stoppage as well could see us go well past the 50 minute mark. And it might just be all the better for Richmond. For the moment, Madison a player down on the sidelines. They can go quickly here. Maybe they can work that to their advantage. Murphy re enters. Nobody there along the lines. Things have really broken down attackingly for Richmond. Had a decent start. As Murphy will foul. Murphy. A little help in the description from a fan of Bree Stevens. Blocked wonderfully by Boyce. And remember, that was. Again, Murphy and Vaughn colliding as the tussle for midfield continues. Vignoles looks for the overlap. First time ball in. Kept alive by Bashua. Settled by Moran. Overhead kick is in! It is miraculous! Maxi Schinfeld with the equalizer of all equalizers in the Henny Derby. Look at it in all its beauty. One touch, bang, right into that bottom corner. Gets on his bike and levels the Henny Derby for Richmond. What a goal. Pure and clean as you like. And Maxi Schinfeld, what a way to score your first goal for Richmond. Well, boy, oh boy, does that make the end of this first half all the more interesting. Would we have even played this long were it not for the injury to Murphy? That's going to go down as a 51st minute goal, I believe. And what a first half we've been witness to. How much longer will it continue? It's all up to our head referee, Alex Beeler. Derek Gebhardt's goal, you thought, man, that's a pretty good goal. We might see that one in goal of the week. But boy, oh boy, it's going to be hard to beat Schoenfeldt. Both sides claim the ball in a first half that never seems to end. Ball on the ground, he free kicks as the referee. If I were Richmond, I would feel pretty good about going into the locker room. Finishing on a high, O'Dwyer. No problem for Stephen Payne. And that will finally bring him in to a first half. That brought us two spectacular goals. It was Madison who got out to the lead early, and then the response was an incredible one. 
one to one. Your halftime score brought to you by Just Coffee Co-op. Well, we couldn't have asked for much more in the opening of the Hinney Derby. A first half fit for the ages as we look to give away our first points in this fixture. The fans turned out and so did the players. Our opening goal from Gebhardt, if you thought this was good, there was even more. Tomorrow, we've been expecting you. At True Stage, we've been preparing for tomorrow for almost a century, helping businesses give their customers, members, and clients what they need to move forward with confidence. Because for us, the future brings possibility, protection, innovation, growth. With financial solutions across insurance, investments, and technology, the people you serve can take on tomorrow, today. So what are you waiting for? Tomorrow, here we come. been a storyteller. I capture those beautiful moments, things other people miss. My health took an unexpected turn, but my care team put my needs in focus, designing solutions to support my ambitions. Now that's just a footnote in my journey, a small part of a story that's still being written. UW Health. Remarkable. Getting the exact vehicle you want is easy at Zimbrick Volkswagen of Middleton. Come in and sit down with one of our sales professionals and build the Volkswagen you want. Pick all the features, order it, and then sit back and relax knowing you're getting your dream vehicle. The best things in life are worth waiting for after all. Check out our selection online or in person with new vehicles arriving every day. Your perfect Volkswagen could already be waiting for you at Zimbrick Volkswagen of Middleton. Welcome back to Bree Stevens Field in beautiful Madison, Wisconsin, where it's halftime in the Hinney Derby. Forward Madison 1, Richmond Kickers 1. Your halftime score brought to you by Just Coffee Co-op. Well, let's show you how things got from last week. Week 5 was an exciting one as teams were in full scoring action. We've got three games with three goals, and we start at City Stadium in Richmond where the kickers came from behind to beat Central Valley. They went 1-0 up. And you're going to see this mistake I talked about in the first half. 17-year-old right here on the right side of your screen, and you just see a learning moment. That's the only thing you can describe that as, something he will learn and get better from. It was goal number one, and then it got worse. 2-1 to the Fuego on the road, but the kickers were not done. They had something to say about it, and they came back storming into this game. Vinyals, as he so often is, at the heart of everything, and Bill Hart strokes it home to tie this game up, and then they would go on to win. Greenville Triumph also at home, also scoring three goals, this time against the Northern Colorado Hailstorm. McKinnon on the penalty, and then Castro and McKinnon again to cap it off, as it has been a poor start to the season for the Hailstorm. Greenville already off to a great beginning to 2024. Just how much can they do? We will wait to see. Our last game with three goals, Tormenta put Lexington to rout. Kuri here with a beautiful ball laid across. He was phenomenal last season, has really grown in since he joined this Tormenta team. And they put them to rout here with a confident 3-0 performance, drawing a controversial penalty, it must be said, but one that was put away with aplomb. That's a look at week five. Here's a look at how things are here. Your halftime stats brought to you by Rhyme. The only numbers that matter up at the top, but possession interesting to me because Madison started off 
with a pretty heavy lead in possession overall. But Richmond worked their way back in. Corners pretty even. They're out shooting them though, Richmond, and that really tells from that overall first half. Well, a lot more coming for you on the Hemi Derby. Stick with us right here on ESPN+. Plus. Two most important days in your life are the day you are born and the day you find out why. Yeah, sweet. I said what I said. I don't care. I paint the town red. Horses have broken free from the fields. They're hungry for the women's game. They want to see women's soccer. They want to play women's soccer. And that's what we're building at the USL. You can see it in my eyes. doesn't care who you are or why you hurt, but pain can be mastered if you know the way. Fight back with Tiger Balm's legendary herbal power. Trusted for over a hundred years, our proven blend of camphor, menthol, and essential oils tames pain with the strength and speed of the tiger so that you can rise above pain and get back to living. This is the way of the tiger. We all have goals. But let's be honest. Most of us aren't going to be professional athletes. But if your goal is to finish your degree, we can help. Come to a university that puts your goals first. Bellevue University, your partner in finishing goals. Tonight's Dental Health Associates fan of the game is Andrew Nelson. Thank you, Andrew, for going full Mingo. Now for more on USL League One, we take a look at the in-season cup. Here we go. In 2024, USL League One will introduce a new in-season cup competition built on regional rivalries and added dimensions to the game itself. Like cups around the world, this new tournament will consist of group play and a knockout round. The three groups of four will consist of the East Group, Charlotte, Greenville, Richmond, and Tormenta. The Central Group, Chattanooga, Knoxville, Lexington, and Madison. The West Group, Central Valley, Northern Colorado, Omaha, and Spokane. The clubs will play a home and away round robin within their group. Then they will play two matches, one home and one away, against two different teams from another group. In total, each club will play eight matches in group action. The top team in each group will advance to the semifinals, joined by the non-group leader with the most goals scored. This innovation will encourage more attacking and entertaining play. That's not the only fun adjustment. If a group stage game finishes tied at the end of regulation time, a penalty kick shootout will take place with an extra point in the standings on the line. The cup will evolve and grow over the next few years, bringing more drama and more memories for all.
Here's a look at the news and notes from around the lead, Texoma FC. We can't wait to bring them in. And we're going to be welcoming Matt Barnes and the Gronkowski family with them as well. How much fun is USL getting? Also in the U.S. Open Cup, eight League One teams are advancing to the third round, which we played this week in the midweek. And then, of course, the men of March. Angelo Kelly Rosales is the winner of the Player of the Month in Mark McKeever. Wow, they have really been wrapping up those overall individual awards. Here's a look at our team of the week where you will see them feature Ian Cameron, team of coach of the week in the team of the week. Adrian Billhart had a fantastic timeout. They feature very heavily in this alongside Chandler O'Dwyer we talked to you about, but Liam McKinnon, you saw him in the earlier Look at the highlights from week five. Two goals, including a penalty kick from him. And Ford Parker in goal is your goalkeeper in the team of the week. Here's a look at scores from around the league. Union Omaha downed Knoxville in a fight at the top of the league. One to nothing. And then Charlotte Independence taking down Greenfield. That's a huge win. Greenfield started really well. The Charlotte Independence a little bit lagging behind the pace but perhaps now they've really broken through and will be able to get things out here that is brought to you by electric bikes and your recent scores in league one here's a look at what is to come tomorrow we've got lexington in spokane parker johnson will have that one for you and then next week union omaha in charlotte independence the kickers are back in action against spokane the first time facing the new team Chattanooga in the Northern Colorado Hailstorm, and then Tormenta will take on the Triumph and a battle in the heart of the South. All of that coming up next weekend. You can see it here on ESPN Plus in the Galazzo Network. Brought to you by Dairyland. Here's a look at how League One shapes up at the moment. Things, of course, are in flux with today's fixture, but the Triumph, that big loss, really does shake things up as the Independents catapult their way up the league standings. Chattanooga Red Wolves down there at the bottom. Just one game played. They have a game later tonight, though, and so be able to climb their way up. The two teams tonight, Ford Madison and the Richmond Kickers, both outside of the playoff loop. Well, folks, lots more coming up for you when we return on ESPN+. Plus. Getting the exact vehicle you want is easy at Zimbrick Volkswagen of Middleton. Come in and sit down with one of our sales professionals and build the Volkswagen you want. Pick all the features, order it, and then sit back and relax knowing you're getting your dream vehicle. The best things in life are worth waiting for after all. Check out our selection online or in person with new vehicles arriving every day. Your perfect Volkswagen could already be waiting for you at Simbrick Volkswagen of Middleton. This isn't just your normal bike. It folds, it unfolds, and it just goes. Need to climb that hill? No problem. And if you're looking for speed, well, you've come to the right place. 28 miles per hour, up to 65 miles of range, and equipped with hydraulic brakes. This is the Electric XP 3.0. Fully foldable, fully assembled, ships free. Simple as that. Go to electricebikes.com and come ride with us. summer let's dine out by truly dining out let's serve up the freshest of food with a side of fresh air and save a little money without sacrificing the savory let's raise our tongs to tasty by introducing our grills to new thrills and make mouths water more than a backyard slip and slide let's live a little more by having another s'more because summer is here and no one does summer savings like festival foods Halftime at Breeze Stevens, one to one. Your halftime score in the Henny Derby brought to you by Just Coffee Co-op. Madison and the Richmond Kickers deadlocked here. So we take a look at our first half highlights. 
It was an encapsulating one. Both of these teams fighting so desperately for what is a very important fixture. More than just the three points are on offer, of course. Here's how it went in the first 45. We got underway early with Gebhardt taking it around the outside. Where is he going? Where is he going? To that bottom corner. That's where. What a beautiful finish. It looked like he might have just dribbled himself out of this chance, and he beats Shenfield for the goal. Guess what? You're going to hear that name again because it is him who gets the equalizer. Beautiful goal to start us off. Well, guess what? It gets more and more better here as the ball comes out to Moran. He settles it himself, Shenfeld, and just loops it into that bottom corner. The goals don't get much better than this. I think you might see more of this goal come goal of the week. That's your first half highlights. Let's take a look now at our Youth Spocker Soccer Spotlight brought to you by Unity Point. The Soccer SC U12s are tonight's Unity Point Health Meritor Youth Soccer Spotlight. Thank you, Madison Area Youth Soccer Clubs, for your continued support. Well, it was a great first 45. All we can hope for is a second that was just half as good as that. It simmered for a while. It was a period where there was a bit of a lull and both teams were just holding on the possession, trying to figure it out. But then late on is really when the full flavor of this game came out. That late stoppage addition. You were already into four minutes and then more was added on. And that's when Richmond pounced. We are back underway. Second half of the Henny Derby in 2024. Reminder, folks, Madison have not lost at home in their home opener. They have never, and now six occasions. They have two wins, three draws, and no losses. Can Richmond come from behind and change that? Or can Madison hold on? Been a long time since... Richmond is one here as a foul will come in and more a yellow card out for Boyce. He caught Neil Vignals. A yellow and nothing more for the Madison midfielder. We'll take a look at it and see just what he was a judge to have fouled for. And it's just a late boot left in. His right foot it doesn't look quite as bad on the second look. I mean, I do think it's clearly a foul because he leaves his foot in late. It is up off the ground. It's also probably a yellow card. Not the clearest you'll see. But he is certainly late. General Dwyer goes down, no foul. They'll get a throw at least. But it's been a long time since Richmond have been able to defeat Madison. It's October of 2022, a 1-0 win on this field. It's the only time they've beat them in the last two seasons. It's been hard going in the Henny Derby for Richmond. Ball settled down. They are able to eventually clear it away. Moran. Calling for the handball. It's not given. Vignals. Drags it away from Galindres. On his right. O'Dwyer around the corner. Who's that last off of? It looks like it was Mitch Osmond. This is now corner kick number four. Neil Vignals does not look 100% as he makes his way to the corner flag. If you cast your mind back to the first half, he had an issue with one of his hips. And then, of course, was fouled earlier. First 
corner kick of the second half brought to you by UW Health Sports Medicine. Ball is in, cleared off the line by Shipman. Shepard back to Hara. Outside of the boot pass. Takes an awkward deflection. O'Dwyer now. Great ball in. A centered header is straight at Shipman. That was Arthur Bashua with the header. And the kickers are picking up right where they left off. That's what's so tough about scoring late is while it's usually viewed as a good thing, you're forcing a big change out of the opposition. They're going to go into the locker room. Much different outlook on the second half. But also there's the risk that you drop off when you visit the locker room. Galindrez done a good job of shutting him and Stephen Payne. And Faraday Sousa down. Switch to the near side. Stephen Payne whips it in on his right, beats Hara. Souza. Whips one in, Galindrez, but it's beaten away by Garnett. Did that take a touch on its way through? Yes, it did. That'll send Devin Boyce over to the corner flag to take Madison's first corner kick of the second half. Brought to you by UW Health Sports Medicine. Here it is. A deep ball over the head of Galindrez. And that'll go harmlessly out. They're just a corner. They've got Garnett as the available option on that right-hand side of your screen. He jogs out of the 18 as Hara boots it long. Very young player, just the age of 17, and not the only youth player they have available to them. Talk with Coach Sawatsky about that. He said, you know, last season they reached a new collective bargaining agreement, which he said was a great thing. He said, but they gave them a new minimum salary, which caused them issues building a team. He said, so they had to rely on some of their youth talents. As Bill Hart gets around the outside. Bill Hart to the end line, sticks one across, and it's sent out for a corner. Great entry ball. Adrian Billhart going back to work. It's Maxi Schinfeld taking this UW Health Sports Medicine corner kick. On his left, an in swinger. Middle of the box, Schinfeld punches away. Back into the mixer. It's a good ball. Settled down. Taken off the boot of Bashua. Vignoles. Richmond, the much better start to the half. They're a team that likes possession. They like to have as much of the ball as they can while still being purposeful with it. There's Garnett, the aforementioned 17-year-old. That youth does fit in, though, with Coach Sawatsky's 
plethora of experience. He spent time with the Seattle Sounders youth. It was a great play by Garnett to break it up and then eventually draw the foul. Timmy Mel will receive a yellow. The second of the game, or second of the season. This all starts out with Garnett's win. And then O'Dwyer just takes the body contact and draws the yellow card. That replay brought to you by Dairyland Insurance. Into the book for the second time this year for Timmy Mel, who's played every minute. He missed the end of last season with an injury after getting 23 starts. Searching for Boshua, the offside flag is up and will bring that play to a halt. Take a look now at our injury report brought to you by UW Health Sports Medicine. Miliano Terzaghi still out. Ani, Guy Franca, and Tony Pineda. You can see nothing there for Madison, but it has been really tough going for Richmond. Terzaghi, of course, one of the biggest misses, misses but Ani also can't be overstated defensively. He's so incredibly important to what they do as a defensive unit. So. Once they can get everyone back on the field together at the same time, they're going to be a real force to be rec reckoned with, even though they already are at this moment. So they are not going to be a team you're going to want to play. Flicked out of play. Nearly strikes our cameraman. They have started out very well, Richmond, but historically this has not been a good period of the game for them. Last season, they had the most goals of any team allowed in the second half. 66% of total of their goals was allowed in the second 45. They were very decent in the first half. Goals scored and goals allowed, but the second half things fell apart for them. In a season to forget after winning the regular season in 2022 on this field. It was a culmination of just such an incredible adventure. I got to be on the call for that game when they won here. So much celebrating that went on in the field. Just a great, great moment. And then, of course, they lost in the tournament. As is so often the case, regular season versus playoff champs. So we'll see if they can buck the trend in the second half. Ball is in, punched away by Hara. Recovered well by Vignoles. He has support, looks for it. Shipman had to come way out. And they'll let that roll across harmlessly for a goal kick. Funnily enough, no player has scored more than one goal in a Henny Derby fixture. Only Terzaghi owns that honor. He has four goals in nine appearances. Coming into this game, of course. These are two teams that know a lot about one another. Madison, in fact, have not played anyone more than they've played Richmond. Here they go again over on the far side. No sympathy from the assistant referee on the far side. One back by Boshua. A tussle is Chalaka. Now Schinfeld.
player down after the shot. It is O'Dwyer. Slowly getting back up to his feet. Looks like he'll be able to continue. We talked about him having a great game against Central Valley. Two goals and the game-winning goal against the Fuego. In fact, all of his League One goals have come against the team from Fresno. He had two goals last season against them, two goals this season against them. Not only have Madison played no one more than they've played Richmond, they're tied with Greenville. This game will take them above Greenville as the most played team of anyone in their history. They also have the best win percentage against any current League One team. Over 57%. The games they have won against this Richmond team. And a lot of success recently. It was domination early from Richmond. They won two of the first three meetings in 2019 when this competition really blew up. 2021, they held on to it, won two of the four, two wins, a draw and a loss. As well as Richmond winning the highest scoring edition of this fixture, three to two. And it's been all Madison ever since. Since the 22 season, they have won all but one of the six fixtures. A game that is so often close in low scoring. This is actually quite rare that one team will not be going home with a clean sheet. 78% of the games to this point have had a clean sheet for one team or the other. In 57% of the time, it's a 1-0 victory. So we've already surpassed that. We are two-thirds of the way through here. Galindrez making his own luck. Squeezed out, though, by Fitch, who has not put a foot wrong. Bashu up. Now Garnett. It was the ECNL U-17 Player of the Year in a national final champion. He is just on a youth contract. He is going to be playing for the University of Washington in, catch this, the fall of 2025. He could play this season on a youth contract with Richmond. Go on next season as well to start and then join his college. What an amazing asset he'll be for the University of Washington. To have played at this level, that is just ridiculous. Stephen Payne holds up under pressure, gets a good cross in, and the referee will pull it back. That's surprising. It did look like it was a foul, but the fact that he let him play through and even get the cross away and still pull it back. Boyce will go again. The all-time appearance and assist leader when he was at Omaha. His third League One team. He's been influential in every single stop. What can he do? Great clearance by Schoenfeld. Galindrez was offside, so that'll fall easily for Hara. What a fantastic career Pablo Hara had for Tormenta. 115 appearances across five seasons, 30 clean sheets. Was the starter for a time, and they had to give up that job due to injury. Here come Richmond again. Takes it on his own! 
and Adrian Billhart fires the Richmond kickers into the lead. They have come from behind to take the lead in the Henny Derby. He just gets away from his man. You can see the pull on the jersey here. Rides the contact and scoops it in and over Burn Shipman. Using his pace and his speed. Great agility shown in the all-important leading goal for Richmond. Make that now four goals for Adrian Bill Hart in the red and white. The Fuego, Spokane, the Bobcats, and now forward Madison. Another tally. This is a guy who last season had one assist for Detroit City in 15 appearances. Had a very good season with Tormenta the year before. Six goals in five assists, including an assist against this forward Madison team. But we are so early in the season, and he already has four total goals, three league goals. Well, right now, forward Madison are staring down something they have never faced before. A loss in their home opener. Surely it can't happen. Still plenty of time to change the tail. I won't be the only one who asks questions about that finish. Whether Shipman thought he was going to lay the ball across or it's one of those instances where you know, when you're on the field, there's probably more space to shoot than it looks like, and it was probably more of an easy finish. When we look at it from our angle, you think, man, that looks pretty easy. How is he able to get that in? But once he gets away from his marker, Chalaka, he can just basically bear down on goal, and it could be one of those things where it was very tough for shipping, which would undoubtedly was. Bill Hart. Moran. O'Dwyer. You can start to feel those hooks of possession start to set in. Foul called in midfield. That'll give us time for our first substitutions. Will be multiple as well. Jacob Kroll will come in. Villa will come in for Sousa. Galindrez also exits. Wolfgang Prentice as well. Triple substitution, so clear from Coach Glazer that something has to change. Big alterations here. I'll be excited to see Augustin de Vila and just how he can contribute attackingly. The young Uruguayan. No foul, says the referee. Kept in play, turned over to Dwyer. Great challenge. Bashua. The 
big man out wide, holding it up. The referee waves it away. A great switch over to this near side just to slow things down. High press from Richmond. Cut out by Garnett. And now they will respond. We'll see just how they're able to do so. This is a Madison team who last season had the least points gained from losing positions. Just two points they were able to pick up. So that does not bode well for them. But Richmond, on the other hand, had the most points dropped from a winning position, 22 points. So the referee is going to jog over to this near side. Looks like Boyce has got a bloody nose, perhaps. Yellow card for Coach Glazer. That has really drawn the ire of the fans here at Bree Stevens Field. And now Richmond will respond with two subs of their own. Chris Cole, the defender. And Ryan Sierra Kowski, an attacker. Cole is going to come in for O'Dwyer. In the end, a pretty quiet game for Chandler O'Dwyer by his standards. In the end, they didn't need him to do any more than what he did because the goals came from other players. And Boshua will step off as well for Ryan Sierakowski. A guy who knows his way around this field was on loan at forward Madison back in 2021. He actually scored the game-winning goal against Richmond in a 1-0 victory. So he knows this field. He knows this team. He's tasked with a much different ability this time around to hold a lead rather than to go out and find one. Five total substitutions, three for the home side, two for the visitors. Will these alterations alter the course of this one? Because as it stands, Richmond are going to pick up their first win versus Madison since 2022 and take an early lead in the Henny Derby. Getting around Simon Fitz for the first time. Header flicked on! And we're level yet again. Davila off the bench and his header into the back of the net. Big impact substitute. The first time today, Fitch has been beaten and it was costly. Davila rises up. Great space attacking that front post and just nods it in past Hara. Well, just the right change. The young man from Uruguay, his first season in his first goal with Madison. We are going to get confirmation here. Yellow card is out for another coach, and we have been told a red card has been issued to Matt Glazer. We will get confirmation on that yellow card out for the assistant coach.
And now we are back level. Well, this game just keeps on giving. The highest ever scoring addition of this fixture was a 3-2 win for Richmond back in 2021. Augustin Davila came in from Boston River in the second division, the Uruguayan Pyramid. Pressure applied only to Vignoles, but there is a foul, and they square up afterwards. He's got to be careful, and it's all kicked off here. Well, Timmy Mel was already on a yellow, but I don't think that's what the referee's going to be looking at here. Another player comes flying in. And he's got his hands full now. Alex Beeler. We'll take a look at it to see just what happened. Over here on the left-hand side of your screen, Mel is fouled, and then it's Schinfeld and Mel who tee up against one another, and then it's Murphy who's come across and pushed him over. Richmond are claiming there was a forearm. From that angle, it looked more like it was kind of in the chest area rather than up in the face. I do think a yellow card is probably warranted. So after that, Thorough shakeup. No sendings off or anything of the like. And Burn Shipman will get us back underway as we get confirmation the yellow card for Murphy. Anytime you come into the situation like that when you were not involved, you're always going to run yourself the risk of getting a yellow in a confrontation such as that. So we're back underway after a lengthy stoppage. Game very much in the balance. Over the top, Davila. Fitch. He was fouled. That would have been some goal. So well struck, and that is just more fuel to the fire for the fans here at Brink Stevens. As you can quite clearly hear, they have not been too enthusiastic about the refereeing tonight. It was a shoulder to shoulder there right on the edge of the box. It's one of those ones where if the ball goes 30 yards over the goal, no one's complaining quite as much as if it goes sailing in on a screamer. But as is the nature of things, can't keep it in play. There's been a decided shift in this one. Richmond looked clear and away after scoring that second goal. Madison just looked down and out. But Fitch, just that momentary lapse, he's been a lockdown defender on that right-hand side. He lets the man get by him. And Davila, the substitute, is so well in the air.
probing ball. Boyce. It's away by Chris Cole. Go for the long throw. All teeing up in the box. Takes one bounce. Over Osman. And fouls Vignoles. Well, not only have forward Madison never lost a home opener, two wins and three draws. So too have Richmond never lost three of their opening four games in a League One season. They haven't since 2017. They've never done it in League One. And the last time they did it at all was back in the USL Championship in 2017. And one one nil win in three one nil losses. If Madison were able to come back against the comeback, and win this one. That would be the first time since 2017. Three losses in their opening four league games. Draw is not a fixture we see very often in this. The only draw ever between these two teams was a nil-nil back in 2021. June 13th, a nil-nil draw in Richmond. This game has bucked just about every trend. Well, the man who thought he had the game-winning goal is going to have to come off here for a very young man, Nicholas Simmons, the 17-year-old from Midlothian, Virginia. He replaces the goal scorer. We'll see if his youth and vigor can propel this Richmond team to one more goal. Vignoles scooped to the head on his right, trying to connect with Simmons. Vignoles will get another bite. He goes over the top. The offside flag is up. It will not count. Ryan Sierra Kowski thought he'd done it. Full credit to Neil Vignoles on the assist. It's a thing of beauty. The USL Championship is on CBS Sports and ESPN platforms all season long. You can catch live matches and expert analysis every day on CBS Sports Galasso Networks and ESPN+. Plus. Go to uslchampionship.com for the complete USL TV listings. Here they come. Ball in the middle of the box. Davilo the target again. Now under 10 minutes plus stoppage time to go. A nail-biter all the way down to the wire. A game that's bucked all the trends. So often it's a clean sheet, so often it's low scoring. Not this time around. Low cross. Payne. Back stick cross away by Fitch. Settled, struck sweetly, but it's up and over. Decent look here. As Murphy said, well, if you're going to give me that much space, I'm going to try one. And he wasn't that far off. And you wonder now who this result is better for. Does Richmond pack it up here and say, you know what, a draw when Madison have got the wind in their sails, the fans at their back, is a point enough for us? Do they try and keep things compact defensively and just look for long outlets to Simmons and Sierra Kowski? 
surely he's not going to try it. He does. It's more than audacious. The way this game is gone, I wouldn't put it past us. Well, up next, Richmond will be in the U.S. Open Cup in midweek. They will face Loudoun United in the third round. First time playing them. A very busy schedule. New Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday. Winning this long trip out to the Midwest. Vignoles. Trying to find Simmons, but they're closing him out. Simmons trying to keep it in play. And the Sierra Kowski is unable to do so. It's been a really good showing from Richmond today. This is a Madison team who have really found their niche attackingly. Been very good defensively as well with three consecutive clean sheets. I think they probably were the odds on favorite given the recent history of this fixture. But in the end, they've held their own Richmond. Shown themselves worthy through injury and relying on a lot of youth in this team. And youth by the literal sense, not even just age. I mean, players on youth contracts. The referee is going to issue out a second yellow card to Timmy Mel. Well, it was the challenge down here on this near side. It's going to send him his marching orders. Well, we'll take a look at it. It's this deep ball. And it's a foul. Absolutely no doubt. A push in the back by Mel on Schinfeld. And the tough part there is, is that it's probably a yellow card most of the time. And it's one of those things that, is it a second yellow card? Well, a yellow card's a yellow card no matter what. That's one of those ones that's really tough. You'd really like to see this game finish level. One of those ones you really don't want to have to make as a referee. But in the end, it will be a second yellow card for Timmy Mel. They will finish the final five plus stoppage time, a man down. Now does that script flip? Does Madison pack it back and say, you know what? A man down, we've come from behind, a draw. That's enough for us. Joao Gamiro has entered play for Richmond. And a yellow card will come out for Simmons. Chases down Shipman. Very high press. Wins a throw. Well, this would be yet another game at home without a win. September was the last time Madison won here at Bray Stevens. 2-0 against Richmond. Their only home win since August. They thought they'd gotten off to a good enough start, and then things turned sour. They have the last say as of now, but there could be more. Simmons. 
That'll bounce harmlessly for Shipman. You wonder there if Simmons should have played the pass rather than the shot. Chris Cole. For anyone just joining us here, the conclusion of this round one of the Henny Derby. Madison, a man down. Timmy Mel, a second yellow card. Sierra Kowski. Away by Osman. We are hearing a massive eight minutes of stoppage time. And that is going to make the fans here at Bree Stevens Field queasy. Simmons. Breaks it up. Vignoles. Lays it outside. All the way across in the end. Whether it was a cross or a shot, it won't matter. The ball is up and over. And there is confirmation. An eye-watering eight minutes of stoppage time. Eight minutes for Madison to endure. A man down but tied on the scoreline. Do they dare try for more? Boyce, they're not done yet. Davila. Chest down, but whiffs on the shot. That was the moment. He could have put his name up on a golden plate had he been able to finish that one off. And that might just be the best look Madison get for the rest of this one. He did so well to bring it down all on his own. Another lengthy stoppage. We had this in the first half where we had the prescribed amount of time in the time we actually played. Nazim Bartman is going to come on for Jimmy Villalobos. Brought to you by Festival Foods. It's perhaps an attacking-minded substitution, or at least a player who can provide an option attackingly. Garnett, Moran, Vignoles, held up by Murphy through the legs of Boyce. Gamiro lobs one in, Sierra Kowski! It's gonna be a lot of that through the remainder of this game. 
a desperate finish to a game that's had just about everything. What we would give for a late winner. Great ball to the near side. Beautiful spin. And he draws the foul. Macias. Just took this game all in his own. Drew the ball down himself the little pirouette and then the contact as well the referee calling the ball back rather than the foul further ahead and another golden opportunity boy stands over it surely not Boyce the header in is wide they have had chance after chance an open header inside the 18. Not completely straightforward, but one he should have probably put on target. And Madison are leaving the chances out there on the field to go ahead a man down. Vignoles driving in, takes it himself, it corkscrews away from goal. Well, they have not given up. At no point have Madison looked like they're content with a point. It's clear that the ball far away and then try to attack. Trying to be as smart as possible. A man down. But will it be enough? Long ball looking for Bartman. Settled by Boyce, his shot, parried away. Well, there was more in that than it first appeared. It looked like he was just going to skew away out for a goal kick. Para had to get a palm to it. Flicked along by Davila. They're throwing everything forward, but they've got to get back as well. Vignoles, he's been at the heart of everything. Gamiro through the lines. He can't keep it in play. We are now into that eighth minute of added stoppage time, but I imagine we will have more than that. We might even play to the 100th. Probably split the difference and say 99. It all depends on our referee. We had the stoppage for the Via Lobo substitution who had to get physio treatment. Richmond are hoping for every second. Simmons, just too much. Simmons, 17 years old himself. Committed to UVA. Youngest ever goal scorer for this Richmond team. And he brings him down. That'll bring out a yellow card as well. That's Simon Fitch. 
played every minute. Confirmation, it is yellow card, it's first of the season. Mr. Dependable. How much more time is left? How much more will Alex Beeler give us of an unforgettable night in Madison? Barnathan sees it out for a goal kick. If I had to guess, I'd say there's probably another maybe 30 to 60 seconds in this. Into the 100th minute. Triple digits in Madison. Down line. Evades his man. Sierra Kowski on an island surrounded by blue. Moran. Vaughn. Surely not much more time left. They can't continue to keep going backwards. Cole sizes up across. It is blocked, and there is the full-time whistle. A frantic finish in Madison yields just a draw. The second time in Henny Darby history. And we'll have to wait to see who has their noses out front for the next fixture. Two to two, your final score. Brought to you by Just Coffee Co-op. A frantic game from start to finish. It seemed so poised. And then Richmond just jumped out in front. Got that 2-1 lead and it looked like they would carry it on to the finish. But then forward Madison, to the heroics of the substitute Davila, able to equalize. And honestly, there were more chances for this game to go on. And the better of them went to forward Madison despite being a man down. Timmy Mel, a second yellow card late on in that second half, gave all the advantage to Richmond. But they could not take advantage of it. Take a look at our play of the match. The goal for Gebhardt, what a beautiful finish. This is brought to you by Dairyland Insurance. Derek Gebhardt, the very unlikely goal, dribbling his way on and on and on until he found that bottom corner with a plum. A, an amazing finish, your play of the match, brought to you by Dairyland Insurance. Gebhardt, who had another great, great game. But now on to our save. Shipman, this one in right on the goal line. Probably should have done better with the opportunity. But still, Shipman with our electric e-bikes. Save of the ma match. Just backpedaling. And Shipman able to come up with a big one. A big game. Big moments. And so hard to pick out just a few. And the game decided by the finest, the finest of margins. One that will be shared in points. One that will have to be decided at a later date as far as the Henny goes. But don't worry, we are not done yet. More to come in this one. Another game to come in this fixture. They will meet yet again later on in Richmond. When they meet again, it will all be on the line in the Hinney Derby. But as it stands, the kickers to forward Madison 2. We'll have more for you when we come back. Come see how Dairyland fits your life. With affordable car insurance that fits your budget and 24-7 customer service that fits your schedule. Even if you have coverage lapses or a bumpy driving history, we've got you covered. For 70 years, we've been helping people just like you get the car insurance they need. So why wait? 
Contact Dairyland today. A game befitting of the fixture. Let's take a look at our full-time highlights brought to you by Just Coffee Co-op. We got started early with this beaut from Gebhardt who just dribbled himself into a great position to finish that one into the bottom corner. Beat Maxi Schinfeld, who will come up in just a moment. It was 1-0 to Madison, and they thought they were on their way to an opening day victory at home. But it was a word to be had by a certain Maxi Schinfeld. Look here. One, two, three. Thank you very much. Into the bottom corner. That one you're going to be seeing for a long time. It's a serious goal of the week. Perhaps goal of the month contender there from Maxi Schinfeld. That leveled us at 1-1. The game was perfectly poised, but the scoring was far from done. We go into the halftime break, and things look like they're going to be settled out. Things might just be even between these two teams and one of the best goals that has ever been scored in this fixture. They just kept coming. It didn't seem as though the goals would ever stop flowing in. In the second half, they got started with Bill Hart from outside the 18-yard box to make it 2-1. On his left, he had an amazing game, an amazing start to the season. That makes it 2-1. It looks like Richmond might be able to go out and win this one, but still, there was one final late twist to the knife. Courtesy of the substitute, Davila, nods in a glancing header to make it 2-2, and that's how the game ends, 2-2. Here's a look at our full-time stats brought to you by Rhyme. 14 to 12 in shots. Ford Madison were far and away ahead of Richmond at halftime. Possession, very even, slightly ahead of the team that likes it. Set pieces didn't play a big role in this one. Pretty much all the goals coming from open play. A game that devolved in that latter half to a lot of yellow cards, a second yellow as well. But in the end, all that matters is that score. Right up top, 2-2 in the Henny Derby between Ford Madison and Richmond. Those are your full-time stats brought to you by Rhyme. A game befitting of the name. The Hinney Derby never disappoints, and it didn't this time as well. From start to finish, these two teams evenly matched and inseparable. Goals galore, beautiful from start to finish. What a present it was to bring it to you. From myself, Zach Burley, and all of us here in Madison, we say thank you for tuning in. We'll see you next time. And from all of us, good night. This copyrighted telecast of the United Soccer League, League One, cannot be retransmitted, rebroadcast, or reproduced without the expressed written consent of the United Soccer League, League One.
really looked more likely than the other to find a goal. Gebhardt might change that, though. On to his right. Gebhardt, tight angle! It makes no difference. Derek Gebhardt, the hero time and time again for Madison. He provides the goal in the Henny Derby. Looks for the overlap. First time ball in. Kept alive by Bashua. Settled by Moran. Overhead kick is in! Was the starter for a time and they had to give up that job due to injury. Here come Richmond again. Takes it on his own! Getting around Simon Fitz for the first time. Header flicked on! And we're level yet again! A long... Founders youth is... Voice has got a blood... Change. and Mal Gamiro just ever goals really looked more likely than the other to find a goal. Gebhardt might change that, though. On to his right. Gebhardt, tight angle! It makes no difference! Derek Gebhardt, the hero time and time again for Madison. He provides the goal in the Henny Derby. really looked more likely than the other to find a goal. Gebhardt might change that, though. On to his right. Gebhardt, tight angle! It makes no difference! Derek Gebhardt, the hero top. really looked more likely than the other to find a goal. Gebhardt might change that, though. On to his right. Gebhardt, tight angle! 